Uh, a little bit of history about this subject. Um, as I said before, I, I'm not really sure uh, when it started. I, I seem to have some recollection that it started somewhere in the 90s. Uh, when I came across it in 2003, the projects were very much at the direction and discretion of the project manager. And the project manager was uh, a tutor, uh, usually somebody with industry experience. And uh, what you did was largely what they said. Uh, they either gave you very specific directions or not, as was their style, and uh, the, the student groups just went off and did it. Now, uh, some of the things that went on there were, uh, as, as I said before, not particularly productive. Uh, it was not uncommon for students to be spending 60 hours a week on it at, toward the end of the semester just to get it all done. And I didn't think that was particularly productive. So um, there, w there was gradually an opportunity to um, uh, provide some very rudimentary processes or some, some partial processes that would guide the students in, in what they did. <coughs> and I did this. Uh, these processes were then taken up in, as I said, 2007 across all of the teams uh, so that everybody had the same processes. Uh, that is the same guidance about what to do. Now this meant that the students didn't spend three days um, arguing about what we should do next because it was all there in front of them. What you should do next is you should go and develop the requirements and to do, to do that you needed to go and uh, first find out how you want to express the requirements. You know, there are different ways you can do it. Um, and there are some things you should include in the requirements, like some traceability back to who gave you the requirement and some traceability forward to how it's going to be implemented. So that much direction was given, um, but you weren't directed to use a particular method of recording the requirements. So you could do it in narrative form, or you could do it in table form, or you could do it in use cases. Now you can do it in story walls, you can do it in uh, user stories. Um, basically, we don't mind. Um, as long as it works for you and it shows that you understood what you're doing. So as I said, that, that worked very well. Uh, the results that came out of 2007 and on were much better and essentially much more efficient than uh, previous to that. Now in 2012, another fairly significant change was made and that was um, uh, we shifted to agile development. Uh, away from what previously had been largely a waterfall plan based development. Uh, now, that, that was something of a challenge because very few of us here in, in, as tutors knew much um, about agile development. Uh, we might have heard the theory, but uh, we've never actually worked on an agile team. So, um, that was kind of fun. And uh, over time, we've gradually um, learned more of what's involved in, in setting up a lot. And the major thing that's involved is, is something that happened in week two, uh, which is a Lego game, where we use uh, Lego blocks and a, a particular game to show you what we mean by agile anything, really. Um, in this case, you you um, build a city out of Lego blocks. And it's to teach you uh, how you go about agile software development as opposed to the big plant based development. So that's the history of it to date. Uh, I'll talk about specific changes to the subject later.